guys, Jeff Gibby here, Business Development Manager for Metastock. Thanks for watching today's video. We're going to talk a little bit about a brand new product that we're releasing here at Metastock uh, called Volt. So with that being said, let's go. To start off, I really want to talk a little bit about John Sloss, and if you're not familiar with John, um, I'll tell you about him. He's worked at Metastock for a total of 18 years uh, during two different sessions. The first time he was here, he developed some of our best add-ons uh, for Metastock. Uh, he worked with John Murphy to come up with our, I believe it was actually our second add-on we'd ever released called Chart Pattern Recognition. He worked with John Bollinger and Steve Neeson to develop those add-ons. Uh, when he wasn't working for Metastock, he, he, he worked on and developed a product called Power Strike and a really, really cool product called Ice. So he knows what he's doing. Volt is actually the next thing that he's worked on and it's a very, very cool pro product that deals with volume profile. Okay, And so what I want to do is I want to spend a little bit of time explaining to you exactly what goes on when you're looking at a volume profile chart. And so what I'm going to do now is we're going to go ahead and kind of take a bit of a closer look and I'm going to break down the elements on this chart to kind of help you understand exactly what we're looking at. So let's go ahead and kind of make this chart a bit of a full screen and I'm just going to point out some things as we go here. So let me go ahead and turn on my laser pointer here. And the first thing I'm going to kind of point out is kind of this blue boundary that you're going to see around the chart. Now this blue boundary is totally adjustable. Uh, it's actually the look back period that we're looking at uh, with this particular chart. So basically all of, the, all of the profile work that it's doing starts here and it, it of course is going to run to the end of the chart. And if you want to kind of shrink that in, there's a manual version of this indicator that you can use that will look at either a shorter period of time or even a longer period of time. Okay. From this, you'll obviously see that the chart has kind of oscillated quite a bit between different levels also see that the, the volume is being calculated down here at the bottom. Now what this does, what this volume profile does, is it breaks up the chart into these different percentage levels that you see uh, at, represented here on the chart. So where you've got like these horizontal lines that kind of come over, those are kind of where the, mo the volume, where important parts of volume has happened on the chart. And the bigger the lines, in other words, the earlier they start on the chart, like for example, this bar right here and this bar right here are the biggest lines on the chart, that represents where the most volume has happened. Okay? Whereas you see kind of the skinnier lines, those would be where less volume has happened. Okay? So that's what you call a typical volume profile chart. Now, how does that kind of work? What do you use that for? Well, you use it for support and resistance. Like, so for example, if you have a big line here, this is, this is actually the biggest line on this Dow chart. Okay? That's basically going to signify that a lot of buying and a lot of selling actually occurred at this level. Okay? They, uh, what John calls this is he calls this your point of control okay? or your value area. Okay, and the vo the level that he's referring to is this upper band to this lower band is where this most significant amount of volume actually happened. So right here, he's kind of drawn this in as the value area. You treat it as support and resistance. This would be the value area of your chart. Uh, this is where most of the buying and selling occurred in during this look back period. Okay. The other thing that you'll notice on this chart is what you've got is you've got a blue line. On a daily chart, this blue line is a, just a 200-day simple moving average, a 200-day simple moving average. Okay? On an intraday chart, and you can use this with intraday data, he, John actually uses a different value. So if we come over here to an intraday one-minute chart of Apple, you're still going to have all of these levels in these lines. Up here, 
what you've got is you've got the biggest area, you've got your point of control, you've got your value area. And you'll notice if you take a look at this blue moving average, it looks quite a bit different. And the reason for that is what he's using for an intraday chart is what's called a volume weighted average price or a VWAP for short, okay? Now, for a volume weighted average price, to kind of explain to you why that, what that is, if I took, uh, for an, this is an example for equities, what they do to calculate volume weighted average price is they're going to take the open, they're going to first figure out what they call a typical price, which is the open plus the high plus the low plus the close divided by four. So what you've got is kind of like a median average price for the day, okay? The volume weighted average price is actually the total of that typical price times volume for the area that you're looking at. So they add up all of the cumulative volume times typical price for the current uh, set of data that you're looking at, and they divide that by the total of the volume. Actually, this is the Metastock formula you could use for that, but really what you're looking at is where what the typical price is for the whole chart uh, based to that particular time. Now, why does he use volume weighted average price? I read the manual, uh, so I actually understand it. The reason that he wanted to use the volume weighted average price is it's because the calculations, they're the calculations that brokerages use to measure that they're, if they're successful in their trades. So, for example, let's say they get a huge order uh, for Apple, maybe 20,000 units. So generally what they do is they don't want to buy 20,000 units all at the same time. They'll break those up into smaller orders of, let's say, lots of about 100 at a time. And what they'll do is let's say they're trying to buy for a client and they're able to buy most of their shares under that, vo uh, that volume weighted average price then they'll be, they can kind of say to, the, their, to their client that they were very, very successful because they were able to get them a good price. The same goes for shorting. If basically they're looking, you're looking to get short on Apple and your broker is able to fill a 20,000 lot order on a short position above the volume weighted average price, they're going to consider that as a successful trade. So the reason that he used it is it's basically what the brokerages are using on an intraday basis. And it has a big uh, influence or an inflection on price. Because if everybody's trying to buy it lower, what's that going to happen is it's going to have a tendency to push the price up. Whereas if everybody's trying to sell it, Above that volume weighted average price, it might have a tendency to push it down. So on an intraday basis, he's going to use the volume weighted average price. If you're looking at a daily chart, basically it's going to use the simple moving average. Okay, Why a 200-day simple moving average? Well, that's what everybody uses. So in any case, kind of sum up what we're looking at here. Uh, just uh, again, the blue triangle area is going to be basically your The blue triangle area is going to be the area that's encapsulated, the area that they're looking at the volume um, and uh, calculating these lines out. Okay, The top of this is going to be your profile high, the highest value that goes into this volume profile. The bottom is going to be your profile low, and this, uh, this vertical line will be your profile start time Okay, uh, or your look back period. Okay, Your biggest line is going to be your point of control. Okay, around that is going to be your upper band and your lower band, and in this area is going to be the value area. Okay, now John uses this very specifically to find certain trade setups. And to kind of explain to you what he's looking for, he calls it a high voltage setup. And what that is really is it's a convergence of price, that moving average, whether it's a simple moving average um, or the volume weighted average price, and then the point of control. When all of those three things come together, it gives what John calls a high voltage setup. Okay? And what I wanted to do is I actually wanted to use Metastock to show you some examples today. So let's go talk a little bit about what we're doing. Okay? And before I do, I'm, I ha did have a bit of a chart to illustrate exactly when that comes together. Right here, if you look at this chart of Amgen, what you've got is you've got your high profile, uh, or your value zone, you've got your weighted moving average, and you have your price all converged. So that's the type of a setup that John's particularly looking for with these voltage setups. 
Okay, so I wanted to show you some examples. What I did was with the Metastock program, what you can do is you can go in and say, show me some good examples. Um, I want to be able to show you historical examples. So uh, this this afternoon when I was kind of putting together this slide, I went ahead and ran an exploration against the S&P 500. Okay, and what I did, the scan that I ran, if you'll notice right here, it says a high voltage daily. So this is the daily scan. I scanned it on a daily bar, scanned the S&P 500, and you'll notice that out of the S&P 500, there's five setups. Basically, uh, uh, Allergen, Assurant, uh, Consul Edison, Foot Locker, and Mendozola, or Mondelez, whatever that is. Okay, so out of this, basically out of the 500, we're looking at five. We've basically filtered out 90% of the stocks because they don't have an opportunity. We want to be able to focus on the ones that have the best opportunity. This is the way the scan report is going to look, like, look for you. Right here, the first column that you're going to have is the close. You'll have your point of control. You have your upper point of control and your lower point of control so you know exactly where the value zone is. You've got where that close price was uh, as a percentage, plus or minus. You've got that 200-day moving average, your MA plus or minus, and here you've got the voltage score. Without going into the detail of what's included in the voltage score, I'll just tell you that zero is the lowest voltage score that you can have, and 10 is the best. So anything, the higher the number, up to 10, the better. Okay, uh, you can sort it by this column. I believe the filter is going to filter anything that's below a five out. So you'll just be looking at anything that has a five or higher. You'll notice that uh, in this particular example for January 8th, when we ran the scan, the highest number that we had is 6.665, and the lowest number we had was 5.02. Okay, and out of the five charts have basically pulled up three. I wanted to kind of give you an example of how you do this on a daily basis, but I went about a month, uh, right now we're recording, it's the middle of February, went about a month back so we could kind of show you exactly how all the trades worked out, and we'll look at three of the charts that came up on this S&P 500 scan. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to the next slide. The first example I wanted to show you is uh, Allegian PLC. Okay. Now, on this, I went ahead and opened up using Metastock uh, to January 8th. So this is the chart, if we had ran it today with today's data, this is the chart that we'd be looking at. Okay. So right here you see the convergence of the point of control, the convergence of the moving average, and you see that uh, close price, and you can see that everything's kind of squeezing it into kind of a, a funnel. It's either going to go up or down. Right now, this, you can view this as this point of control as support or resistance. Okay. So um, fast forward about a month. Basically, this shot up from oh, a little over 81 to about a, uh, 87. Six per, six not percent, six point jump in just about a month time. Okay, let me show you another example. This is uh, Assurant. And uh, uh, right here again, what you're going to see, because I'm going to point it out to you, you see that convergence of that uh, volume weighted average price. You see the uh, value zone. Okay, and you'll notice I've put a little bit of a dotted black line so you can see exactly where that is if I move the chart date forward. Okay, now you're going to assume that basically. Uh, assurance went up as well. Okay, but you might be surprised. Again, this acts as a support and resistance area. It's telling us to look for something. In this particular example, if I kind of go in and look at the commentary for this particular day, it's going to say both, the, it's going to give us a little bit of an information. This voltage for this particular security is 5.27. Okay, both the last price and the 200 day moving average are within the POC zone. Okay, the point of control. Also, the higher than expanded per expected percentage of the volume has accumulated within that point of control zone. So those go into the score. The score is 5.2.7. Look for support or resistance at the current price levels. Okay, with prices over the last 20 days trending up, resistance within the POC zone may be more likely, but visual confirmation is suggested. So it's actually saying, well, it looks more likely that this is actually going to be resistance area, which means what? Well, it means it's going to hit that point of control zone and we expect it to fall down. Let's see what happened. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go over to the next slide, take away that commentary. 
And you'll see right here, this is the bar we were looking at, this horizontal line here. This was the point of control at the time. Of course, it's all moved over because we're looking at newer data. But between that, it went from almost 100 to about 85, again within about a month time, shedding about 15% of the actual value of the stock, again within about a month. So one more example for you. Hope you, hope you kind of understand what's going on here. In this particular example, what we've got is we've got um, the MDLZ.O, okay? A Mondelez International CLA, okay? In this particular thing, again, same thing. This is, this is what the chart would have looked like on January 8th, 5.03. Uh, kind of gives you a bit of a summary. In this particular thing, it's calling for support within the point of control zone, okay? So let's go ahead and find out what happened out of, out of this example. Uh, this one went, uh, again, in about a month's time, went from about 42 to about 46 and a half, okay? So basically does a pretty good job of identifying in an objective way, support and resistance. Uh, to kind of sum up what this doing, is a lot of times, you know, you're kind of looking at support and resistance and you're trying to kind of draw funny lines on the chart based on where you think it is. What this does, what, what basically the volume analysis tools allow you to do and the volume profile it does, is it allows you to establish those where the actual buying and so selling is actually occurring, okay? And not only that, but it allows you to kind of figure out the weighting of the volume based on where support and resort is actually happening. Okay, then you can combine that with uh, moving averages. John combines that with moving averages and prices to kind of get those high voltage setups. Very, very cool product. Included in this is basically gonna be uh, uh, your adjustable as well as your kind of pre-built uh, uh, volume profile indicators. They've got a version for FX, uh, which is a little bit different. Like with FX, obviously you have a 24 hour uh, price, it opens and closes, uh, it doesn't open and close. It basically, you have a 24 hours. So with John, what he did was he did a 24 hour rolling window. And he, he talks about that more in his 60 page manual. He actually kind of goes in exactly how that's set up. But there's a different kind of setup, a different kind of template if you're using Forex. Uh, you've got the daily, you've got the one minute and the five minute intervals. You've got, I showed you the uh, exploration. There's actually two. There's a high voltage exploration and a price in point of control zone scan that you can run. Of course, you have the expert advisor. Those were basically giving us the buy and sell setups. They do issue alerts if you happen to be watching a, uh, a, the, uh, a stock and it gives you a setup. It will pop up an alert on your screen and actually tell you, hey, there's a high voltage setup. A lot of times you'll be scanning for them and that's how you'll find them. And all of the templates that are pre-built for it and a very comprehensive 60 page manual, okay? Uh, it's all available. Volume profile in Metastock, uh, the total system that's put around, all of that can be purchased for just a one-time cost of 299 bucks, okay? Um, in addition to that, what we're gonna do is, as with every other product we sell, you can try it out if it's something that you like, you can evaluate it. If it's something that helps you make money, keep it. If not, we do back it with our full 30 day money back guarantee. I'd encourage you to give it a try. You can give us a call, 800-882-3040. You can chat online with us at metastock.com slash sales chat. Do you wanna spend just a second and say thank you for come watching the video? Please let us know if there's anything that we can do to help you with your trading and I'll see you at the next video.